I think one of the things that just always grounds us is the, uh, what, what uh, the clients value. Uh, and um, you know, there's so much transformation happening in the world, whether it's how people are consuming content, the choices that we have to place ads, the tools that we have to create ads, um, but always getting grounded around what the brand, uh, whether it's a Jack in a Box or a Coca-Cola or Qualcomm or Vizier or any of the brands that we heard, um, heard from uh, during this uh, event, hearing the things that are their core values, um, their brand code and how they get belief from their brand code. Um, you know, there's so many different ways to create content and different ways to get it in front of people, um, but not all those things always adhere back to the core tenets of the, the brand. Um, so, you know, for me, I've really gravitated towards hearing how, how the brands, you know, think about their own businesses, how they make connections with their customers. I think invention has value. You know, there are, there are things that, um, uh, you know, inventing new experiences, those types of things certainly have value. Innovation is a, an entirely different animal. Uh, you know, it's everything from a belief uh, to a uh, practice uh, to a set of tools. Um, you know, we actually broke down innovation into, you know, about eight different areas to actually help people fix it around. And the main thing that I loved about, uh, about the discussion is when uh, I first got the call uh, to help lead the roundtable discussion, uh, it wasn't pitched to me as a discussion around innovation. It was about solving problems in new ways. Um, and so, you know, innovation is just, it can be such a loaded word. It means different things to different people to kind of break it down to, um, you know, hey, there's way, ways to innovate a culture within organization. There are ways to innovate intelligence and in how you're getting it. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think we really enjoyed kind of talking about all these different aspects. But the main thing I, I, I think was, uh, was really key in that discussion was talking about permission to innovate. And permission to innovate in a lot of ways means permission to fail. Um, and the reality is some, some organizations have a higher tolerance for failure than others. Um, and a lot of organizations don't recognize that failure is learning. It's like literally the scientific method. Um, and uh, so we, we talked a lot about how, how to, uh, I guess, fail safely, fail in ways that the C-suite can accept. Um, so I, th I think of anything in that innovation discussion, um, you know, failing small, failing safe, and structuring uh, where and how you fail. I think that was that was the kind of the best part of it. The biggest thing is making sure that the C-suite uh, buys into the reality, and that's the world is transforming really fast. Um, the way people are receiving content, how they're engaging with brands, um, you know, how brand experience and the content and the product in so, so many ways overlap. So when you accept the fact that the world is changing, you, you can't keep doing the same things. You're going to fall behind and you're going to fail. So I think when the C-suite understands the a ma massive amount of change that's happening, that's the first start. Uh, then from there, I think it's establishing kind of safe places to, to fail uh, and to learn. You know, where are we going to get our insights from? How do we use the scientific method um, to act on those insights uh, and learn and grow and build? So, I, you know, I think the best organizations are the ones that are structured. They have learning objectives. Um, they have uh, a tolerance for failure. They're breaking out budgets for experimental things. Um, all the while, um, you know, they're continuing to do the things that work for them. So there's some talk about 80-20 uh, budget splits, you know, 80% of the things that are working for you, 20% for innovation. Um, there's 70-20-10 splits, we've heard uh, about those things. All those things are frameworks to help um, uh, identify where to innovate and how to innovate. You know, I, I believe that we are very soon, if, if not presently, working or living in a post-digital world. Uh, it's a phrase that gets used and thrown around from time to time. But, you know, I believe that we're living in an audience-centric world. Uh, and the organizations, the companies that are most successful are the ones that are pulling in insights uh, from individual audience groups. They're tailoring how they communicate around those audience groups. Um, so the, the main thing that, you know, I'm most excited about, I guess, in my role is just seeing more and more of our clients shifting to an audience-centric mentality. You know, we as an agency, you know, our motto is people first. Um, a part of that is cultural, how we choose to work with, uh, uh, with our clients, how we choose to work uh, uh, internally and value our talent and develop our talent. But a big part of that is uh, how we view our clients' customers as being entirely the, the focus of what we need to do uh, as we look at the client's business objectives. So more and more of our clients operationalizing that, that's the most exciting thing.